Um, hi everyone, I'm James Foreman, and today I'm going to talk about. Oh, that was my real side. So I'm, I'm going to talk about the Tower of Pisa, famously wonky. Uh, you've heard of it, you've been there, maybe. Maybe you've even taken a photo like this. But did you know that 30 years ago, its um, lean had become so dangerous that Ladbrokes were taking odds that it would collapse before the end of the century? Uh, it had become a danger to the public, and the tower was closed, and an elite team of 14 engineers was assembled to save the tower. Oh, it's too quiet. Oh, never mind. Um, where do we get to? Where, so, when the tower was built over 800 years ago, it was originally built straight, and it gradually developed its lean over time, and no one knew how or why. So, to understand how this had happened, the engineers had to look at the ground. And I'm going to explain this today uh, through two stalwarts of Italian gastronomy. I don't know if everyone can see. Coffee and tiramisu. <laughs> and you can have to imagine that these represent two different kinds of soil. So the coffee is a sand. Um, oh, oh, there you go. Um, coffee is a sand. The coffee granules are very permeable. And when we apply a force to this, the water is squeezed out and the, the sand compresses. Uh, this is called the process of soil consolidation. The tiramisu is more like a clay. It's very dense and compact. And when we squeeze it, the water cannot be squeezed out and the tiramisu doesn't move it consolidates and compresses a lot slower than the sand. Enter the Tower of Pisa, a cleverly disguised, disguised jar of pasta. Um, the real tower weighs 15,000 tonnes. And when we apply this weight across the two different soils, you see that it tilts and even could collapse. And this is what could have happened at, this is what happened at Pisa. Um, it's a very important lesson in how ground conditions can vary substantially over short distances and how important this is for building design. So what could our engineers do? Um, it was a really tough job because the locals are fiercely proud of their tower, passions run high, and there was no chance of doing anything which could damage the tower. So the first idea they had was to add more weight to the side, uh, which wasn't compressing, to push it down. But the Italians hated it, and they even threw tomatoes, this happened, at the engineers. Um, for making their tower so ugly with these steel bars. So they had to come up with some new crazy ideas. So their next idea, they didn't, didn't do this one, was to attach balloons to the tower. Um, but eventually, it was an idea by British engineer John Burland, um, who came up with a process called soil extraction. And soil extraction is basically a bit like eating some tiramisu. Uh, basically, tiny chunks of soil are cut out of the side, which isn't compressing. Um, and that caused the tower to retilt and restabilize. Uh, it had never been done before, but they did it, and it worked. Um, <laughs> and, and the tower was stabilised, and tourists have been returning ever since. Um, but the Italians still weren't happy. They now were complaining that the tower had lost its allure, that it could uh, fall over at any moment. But I never, guess you never can win. Done. <laughs> on the leading tower of tiramisu? Uh -huh. Yeah, so I guess I'd um, be interested in how you came to choose the ingredients that you did. It was, it was a long process. I originally had uh, lemons. I was, yeah, basically, I, it all started with, a cafetiere works quite well for, for showing how you squeeze water out of something, so I had sort of coffee as a thing which would compress, so that was my sand. I needed something to be the clay which wouldn't compress, and initially was just going to fill it with lemons. Um, uh, but I decided that didn't really illustrate the engineering concept very well because it was almost the opposite. Um, the reason a clay is so impermeable is because the particles are so tiny that actually the water can't escape. So uh, I decided to just switch it and I just thought of anything I could which was Italian which wouldn't squeeze. Uh, and I get to eat the tiramisu afterwards I suppose so that's a benefit. <laughs> Think of taking clay out from one side of the Tower of Pisa 
as engineering? Do you think this is kind of the work people often don't think about? Um, yeah, I don't know. One of the things about civil engineering is it's hugely, hugely broad. You know, this is, is geotechnical engineering, which is just one single branch. One of the things I quite liked about this story, which I thought was good to sort of take to the, the public or encourage children to get involved in engineering, is it's a, a modern day story of the single hero engineer, John Burnley in this case, who kind of, you know, we always hear about Isambard Kingdom Brunel and, and people in the Victorian era who, who are these sort of heroes of engineering and John Berlin's a kind of modern day example of that, so it's quite inspiring to get into the industry. Ladies and gentlemen, that's James. James, James, James.